So in this video, we'll talk about pain management in rheumatologic diseases and some of the most commonly used medications for that reason. So we can divide pain medications into three main categories. First is acetaminophen. Second is NSAIDs. And all others in a different section. Now by others I mean different medications including opioids, cannabis, also you can add an NSNRI and tricyclic antidepressants as well. Now when it comes to acetaminophen a couple of things you need to know. It has the least side effects and the main one is going to be liver toxicity. Normally, the maximum dose is 4 grams per day, but if the patient has liver disease or liver cirrhosis, then the maximum dose would be 2 grams per day. Now, let's talk about NSAIDs. So, as we all know, we have two main categories. COX-1 and 2 inhibitors and COX-2 inhibitors. COX-2 inhibitors does not affect the stomach, so it has least peptic ulcer disease, and less acute kidney injury as well. Now, the problem with them, they increase the platelet aggregation, which means increased risk of clotting formation. That's why they increase the risk of coronary artery diseases as well as increase the risk of stroke formation. Now, there is one exception in this category that does not increase platelet aggregation as much, which is the celecoxib. And that's why you still see it being prescribed by different physicians. Now let's move on and talk about COX-1 and 2 inhibitors, which are the traditional NSAIDs. The first one we have here is indomethacin. Now its main use is in gout disease. And one important side effect you want to know about is the headache, which is present in around 20% of the patients. Then we have ibuprofen. And then we have the naproxen, which is the least in terms of side effects on the heart. So if they give you multiple choice question with a patient who needs to be on NSAIDs and he has a history of coronary artery disease, probably you wanna, they want you to know that naproxen is the best one in this case. Then we have the Keterulac. Now Keterulac has the worst effect on the kidney among all NSAIDs. It can cause AKI, and that's why it's not recommended to use it more than five days. Now, the last one I want to mention is diclofenac, which is commonly used in osteoarthritis patients. And it has two main formulations, PO and topical. It has known side effects, and main ones are transaminitis, and also higher risk for acute kidney injury compared to other NSAIDs. And this was a short review about pain management in rheumatologic diseases. We'll talk more about the drug of choices and the use of them when we talk about the diseases themselves.